you. Well, well. <laughs> Have to say something. I will concede that he has better pictures than me. <laughs> but maybe I have a better content. Let's see. OK, so uh, primary care versus specialists, the workforce that will make the difference. Or uh, c'est la grande séduction. I don't know what, if you know what is la grande séduction. It's a movie in Quebec. It was a romantic comedy. And it was basically about a little village who, who need primary care a primary care physician, but they couldn't attract this person there. So we, they've made a lot of uh, initiative to make sure that they attract and retain that particular physician, and it was very interesting. So my argument is to say, OK, let's go through all these things that we've seen today, and I want to remember, <laughs> I really want to thank all the speakers before me, because I'm going to skip the third of my presentation, to discuss about why is it that we have to uh, have primary care physicians, of course, but it's not that simple. So three questions. How are, how are we doing so far? I think we have a good idea right now. With better treatment, what should be the gold standard of care, <laughs> which we might disagree on for patients and for population, and how can we achieve this? So this you've seen many times today, so needless to say, we're still pretty low. Uh, obstacle to treat hepatitis C, may not need it, it often doesn't work, it's a huge undertaking for the patient, it's a huge undertaking for the doctor, HIV co-infection complicates the whole thing, and it's very expensive, blah, blah, blah. So this is basically what we've been hearing for the past 15 years. And it's implicating something like treating HCV requires specialists, specialists, specialized settings, and also highly motivated patients with advanced liver disease. So this is 2010, and then we wait for the new ones, and, but we're not there. Now we've heard that 43% of the population that are not treated in Canada are either uh, former drug users or drug users, current drug users. And we've seen that even in Vancouver, downtown east side, where they have all these clinics, etc., they have an uptake of treatment that is really low. And if we continue like this or uh, upgrade a little bit our things, chances are treatment are, as prevention won't work in a population with high prevalence. This is the same slide as Natasha Marta. So let's move to the other part, which is what should be the standard of care. So this is a slide from Greg Dorr that shows that basically the treatment complexity was here, and it went very high. Now it's ki kind of very complicated. The side effects are very high. And in the next few years, we're going to have treatment that will be a lot less complex. Now. Let's address this idea of the resistance and everything. I think HIV and HIV is not exactly the same thing, first. And second, from what I know, with all the models of care that have been developed with HIV, you have the 100 line you can call 24-7. You have a lot of, of tools if you're in a setting and you're a little bit less experienced than the other ones, but you see a lot of other patients. So. Uh, that you can have the information quite rapidly and you have apps and you have tools and you have colleagues and you have telemedicine and you have everything in HIV. And I don't really see why we can't have that for HCV, just to say. So the treatment strategy goes from a, a very specialized care just for the side effects and the, the to something that might be more into the general care. And we go from thinking just treating the ones that are very sick and waiting for the, the pills for the ones that are not too sick to something of uh, general health care that includes HCV within the general health care. Doesn't mean that all the hepatitis C patients have to be treated in, in 
uh, primary care settings, of course. So we've seen that, and what we see in that slide is you have about 30-something percent who have a cirrhosis, and you have maybe a little, little bit more patients who have decompens less decompensated cirrhosis. And for those, of course, we need specialized treatment. We need specialized treatment for people with schizophrenia or are completely decompensated, but we might not need specialized treatment for F0, F1, or F2 uh, patients. So in summary, we have this. If, uh, uh, we go from treating a liver disease when we can't wait to treating a viral infection, and with a nice population that might be, well, that might be the population that Dr. Curtis Cooper likes so much, and that goes to his clinic from all over the, uh, the Ontario, to this population, which is a little bit more tricky sometimes, sometimes not, but sometimes, and who we see in the street, and might go to see the outreach nurse, and might go to see the general practitioner, might not like to go to a hospital sometimes. I work in a university-based hospital, and of course we have this barrier saying that the outreach worker comes to our clinic, so it's, it happens. So how do we achieve this? Just put some barriers and strategies for engagement. We've seen a lot of them today. When you look at that, poor awareness, lack of symptoms, fear of side effects, all these things, are the specialty of primary care. And just to let you know, primary care research and primary care work has evolved very much in the past 10 to 15 day, uh, years. And primary care is about multidisciplinarity, interdisciplinarity, continuum of care. They, they're using this chronic care model that have been developed to treat hypertension, diabetes. They have clinical nurse on site. And this is what they're doing. So they can learn from HCV testing, and they can learn how to do it. It's not that complicated. By the way, HBV, there is a vaccine now. So we may, we may forget this one. And, for the liver assessment, it, well, it depends on the collaboration of the specialists that might begin to think that the family doctors are not so dumb and that they, they can do something sometimes. <laughs> Actually, what do the patient need to achieve HVR if they're not decompensated, cirrhotic, etc.? They might need information, counseling, they might need all these things that is the specialty of primary care physician. In the middle, there is the diagnosis of the other conditions, taking care of the other conditions. By the way, there is more family practitioner with methadone and suboxone permit than specialist. And then they can refer when they need to refer. And it's increased the quality of life. So now, the elephant in the room. Are family physicians able to treat? And we've, we heard some obscene things around, let's say, antibiotics. It was kind of funny that you presented the statistics. And as far as I know, most antibiotics in hospitals are prescribed by specialists. <laughs> <laughs> and the misuse of antibiotics was the same in hospitals than in the primary care setting. So sorry. <laughs> But the real question is not this. The real question is, are family physicians willing to treat HCV? Because basically that's what it's all about. By being discredited by their colleagues and saying, you can't do that, say, well, they have enough on their plate. Why should they bother take upon another difficult task, which is primary care of the vulnerable population, et cetera? And it happens. On the other hand, what we've been seeing in ECHO and all these places is when the system are in place, primary care physicians are willing and able to take those tasks which takes their specialty, which is the general care of people. So, and uh, uh, we've seen this slide as well, ECHO is a good example of what we can do to make sure that the, the general practitioner can do that. So that we. 
want to move from this model of tertiary care where you treat a few patients here and there and when the drug user doesn't count doesn't come because he missed his appointment for the the liver the the fibro scan or eight months after with the specialist well he's not counted in the clinic in the nice picture you just you just showed so we can we can move to something different where you have more of those black uh, cirrhotic patients in the tertiary clinic but a lot more patients treated in other settings but people that know how to treat all the other conditions that are major barriers for treatment whoops and then you end up with a lot more patients treated tested screened treated for their other comorbidities and you go back to this hcv cascade of care and what happens is you continue to see patients in the specialized but you have a lot more people screened you have a lot of people that are tested and that, that know their condition that decide to begin their treatment because you have a task force, a workforce that is bigger. And you have people who are doing what they do best, primary care physician that do, they take the less complicated cases and the specialists take the more complicated case. And in the end, if you quadruple the treatment, you even succeed in treatment for prevention. So I won't finish by a poem or by trying to destabilize my opponent in speaking French. Because <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly, pitching a, sh a, a Shakespeare thing that I don't even understand quite well <laughs> was, I think, voluntary. Thank you very much. <laughs>